picking up. Okay, so I'm Nerbeater. I'm going to read an article that I wrote for Neurosoup. Neurosoup is an information article forum repository for all sorts of information related to psychedelics, to consciousness, to what we can do with psychedelics and our consciousness. Very interesting stuff. Neurosoup has a YouTube channel and a neurosoup.com you can also access. And uh, here we'll go. We'll get right into my article. Uh-oh. Do you have a brain disease you didn't know you had? So, I was diagnosed after an intense psychosis, after much self-admitted psychological deterioration and disordering with schizophrenia in 2002, re-hospitalized in 2006 after another acute psychosis. And previously through 2000-2001, I was developing more and more acute chronic pain given the cute moniker in its being technically vague and similarly precise pain amplification syndrome. I've always wondered about following the traditional imbalance theory of psychology that my chemicals are all topsy-tipsy-turvy. It is said I need pharmaceutical psychodecibel limiters and compressors to control these highly activated dopamine, tryptamine, and substance P for pain molecules that are all imbalanced in my brain system of systems of genetic disposition, supersaturated synaptic clefts and axons, and dendrites containing every variety of endogenous elixir all crammed into dense polyflavored vesicle berries. Well, I will have to wholeheartedly agree with these theories that my mental illness entails that my brain an extended metabolic structure is a warped mass of inappropriate, painful, often effectively antisocial surges of magnetic activity and chaotic nerve communication. I must embody a brain disease, come to think of it. After all, I had a physics professor once who told me I had all my facts about quantum mechanics correct but she interpreted the opposite of my interpretation and how it treated the philosophy of mind and revealed to me that she actually believed in the mind-brain identity theory. What she said of her beliefs represented to me, in the words of philosopher David Armstrong, a feeling that science will eventually determine conscious life in all its multifaceted experiential essence to be nothing but a physico-chemical mechanism. In my own words, if we take mainstream quantum and classical physics as well as psychology and philosophy for that matter on face value, we will actually conclude that psychological elements like effort and desire have absolutely no part or role in the actual causal mechanisms of, say, devious and mutual play or even lovemaking. We must, after that, to be logically coherent go one step farther in the way we construct the language of our interconnected claims, whether they are made in physics or psychology, and therefore conclude that consciousness is the primary brain disease, which underlies all of what we mistakenly call the willingness of humanity to put effort into ecological and social chaos. Just look at the world for one second. That's enough said right there about all the pandemic or the cultural psychosis and these galactic parts you hear. We may also safely conclude that schizophrenia and chronic pain are primarily nothing but more strange quantum physical mechanisms. Uh-oh, do you have a brain disease you didn't know you had? Like Robert Anton Wilson said, of course I'm crazy but that doesn't mean I'm wrong. Contemporary neurophysical psychodynamics leaves something to be begged for in this dismal state of admittedly loose, but nonetheless perhaps compelling logical implication, especially when global culture itself, within a plethora of revolutionary psychedelic, mimetic, and deep ecological theories, 
is just completely bonkers. If normalcy is willful ignorance and denial that humanity is on a crash course of deep ecological, technological, and cognitive waste, think about interconnection of TV with Earth and human mind, for instance. Then every normal human being on Earth has a severe neural imbalance. Of course, this wouldn't be on average like they used to gauge my schizo pain imbalance compared to normal people. Purely average individuals on an individual basis, not really possible, but whatever for my purposes. Instead, what I am calling cultural psychosis would be an imbalance in terms of sustainable ecology and peace. Nuff said. Indeed, I'm crazy, but doesn't mean you're not. And that's the article. It's a little one-page quickie of information to rot your brain. To make way for the new mind. Yeah, that's how it goes. Peace.